We ended the last part with defeating the gym leader. This video starts directly with a new addition to our team. Last time I forgot to go up to catch another Pokemon in this little grassy area. And oh boy was it worth it, or at least it was really cool. On my normal playthrough I didn't encounter a single shiny. And here I got it as the first encounter on the road, just amazing. Who's that Pokemon? It's Cleafa. It's a pity that it looks really boring, but a shiny is a shiny, am I right? I lowered her HP and catched her. I called her Shining Star because she is so shiny. On our way back to Jubilife City, we met our lovely rival again. Of course, he is running into us again. He tells us he also got his first badge and that the next gym is in Eterna City. At least he is good for something and now we know our next location. He begins to count down his seconds before he dashes and after he counts down one second, he lost control and dashed away. Too much sugar isn't good. Our way back to Jubilife City was peacefully, but it can't hold for long. On the northern exit of Jubilife City, we find the professor talking with some odd looking twins. He tells us, Those miscreants are babbling other nonsense. And that we should kick their asses. We battle side by side with Lucas and this is our first double fight. Those clowns from Team Galactic had only one Pokemon each. The first one had an Elekid and the other one a dance boss, which was really appropriate. Lucas wasn't kidding around when he said he wanted to teach those losers a lesson and throw the Frostless into the fight. This match was of course not even a little bit fair and we knocked them out easily. Right after the professor and his mate left us, a strange girl is approaching us. She tells us how amazing we were. Her name is Bill, uh, Bibi, and she works as a system administrator in Hard Home City, which is east from here. She thanks us for putting on such a good show and at this point we have access to the Pokemon boxes from anywhere. Helpful little girl. We hadn't been on Route 204 for long before we came to a cave. Now that we are able to use Rock Smash, we can get through this cave. In Ravage Path, we encounter a Nuzleaf. This was the first encounter on this area, so I catch it, but I don't like this Pokemon much, so it goes right away into the box. We use Rock for the first time and now we are able to leave this cave. We fight many trainers on the way to the next safe spot. And our shining star learns this arming voice, which does emotional damage. You heard right, emotional damage. After I arrived in Flow Aroma Town, I remembered that the star sells moonstones and I bought one for my shining star. I also bought a focus band for Spike V2. This band could prevent a one shot. I gave my Pokemon a ready surf rest and I got a sweet watering can from this lady. We leave the town and head to Valley Windworks. On the way, we met this lovely child. Her dad got kidnapped from space aliens. We follow the path to the Windworks to rescue her dad from Team Galactic, aka Space Aliens. At the Windworks, I catch the Banette, which I called Maddie. Maddie replaces Spike, cause Spike V2 is way better anyway. Right in front of the Windworks is a Space Alien. Without a fight, we can't enter the Windworks. He had a blast toys, but besides from being tanky, he had nothing to offer. This fight gave our Shining Star enough experience to evolve into Clefairy. Sadly, she looks still boring. The Grunt from Team Galactic is a real genius and locks the door behind him, so I can't enter the Windworks. We got the Moonstone for this moment and we evolved Clefairy into Clefable. Now our Shining Star has reached its final form and the Shiny sucks. This way is a dead end now, so we go back to the town. Those duels at the northern exits are away now, so we can enter it. But directly after we find them and they are again up to nothing good. This time they want to steal honey from this old man. In the fight against those losers we use our shining star for the first time. And let me tell you, she isn't good. But still good enough for them. After the fight they say, this bread's tough, like really really tough. Tougher than I can put into words and I know a lot of words. Those kids are very intellectual. For sure. They leave back to the windwork and we get some honey and the key for the windwork for saving this guy. With the key we can finally enter the windwork. We had to fight some losers on the way to the end of the windwork and at the end there was the leader waiting for us. If we win a battle against her she leaves, but if we lose, yeah, I don't think that will ever happen. She had only two Pokemon. Her first one was the Omaster. We sent out Spike V2 and while Mudslap was super effective it didn't do much damage. The rollout from Omasta was even more disappointing. I used another Mudslap cause it was very effective and it lowers the accuracy from Omasta. The rollout from Omasta was still a disappointment. Next we used Night Slash with a crit and almost defeated Omasta. I don't think I have to tell you what happens next, it's obvious. Another Night Slash was enough for Omasta. Her next Pokemon was a Rapid Dash. I changed Spike V2 to Quirly because he was our only water Pokemon. I really hope I find someday a better one, cause this one sucks. Rapid Dash used Tail Wipe and lowered our defense. Quirly had no water attack, so I tried Struggle Bug, and as I thought, it does almost no damage. 
So I send out Spike V2 again, he's my favorite so far. Stupid Rapid Dash, use Tail Wipe again, and it always makes me fear a one shot. Night Slash from Spike V2 did decent damage, but Rapid Dash landed a critical hit. In fear of losing my beloved Spike V2, I used the potion, which restored almost no HP. I filled up his HP more and more with some more potions, and it was time for another Night Slash. Two more Night Slashes later, and Rapid Dash was done. And with Rapid Dash down, we won the fight. Team Garlic leaves the windwork, and the Thatter of the Girl was saved. She is just as lovely as a child should be, and she tells her dad that he smells bad. Looks like Team Galactic had him working non-stop. Now that Team Galactic doesn't guard this bridge anymore, we can go to the next city. This is also a new area, so again I catch a new Pokemon. We are lucky so far, and we defeated not a single first encounter. This time it was Whiskash, a new water Pokemon, so that awful Quirly can go. I called him Waluigi. Raw 205 had also a lot of trainers. For the sake of our team, I defeated every single one of them. Next up is the Eterna Forest. Shortly after entering the forest, we met Cheryl. She is afraid to go alone through the forest and she asks us if we want to go with her. For the time she is with us, we only have double fights. She has a Rhyhorn and mostly used Bulldoze, which is an attack who hits everybody, including me. Normally I would say an attack who hits everybody is nice, because the fight will end faster, but this time I am afraid to lose the Pokemon. Luckily, Bolos did not that much damage, but it was still scary. The first encounter we got was Deoxys and Manapi. I asked for a better water Pokemon, and here it is. On a double fight, you can choose which one you want to catch, and of course I choose Manapi. Raihon lowered everyone's HP and fainted not long in the battle. Sadly, I miscalculated my damage output and Bing Bong's Leaf Age defeated Manapi. After I messed up, I tried to at least catch the Oxus, but after two failed attempts, I gave up and defeated him as well. I only have a limited count of Pokeballs, and I can't waste it for a hard to catch legendary. Ironically, I found the nest ball shortly after, but one ball more is still not enough. We made our way through the forest, and Cherry is only giving us a thanks bye and leaves. I hoped for something more useful, but okay. I got at least through the forest. The forest ends on Raw 205 again, so we can't catch a new Pokemon here. Not much longer and we reached Eterna City. We walk around the town and met Cynthia. She tells us that she is studying Pokemon mythology lately, just out of curiosity. And that we have a statue of an ancient Pokemon here in the city. Before we end our talk with her, she gives us Cut, but we only can use it after we got the next batch. What a cool lady. Now that we finally reached the next town, it's time for the next gym. This gym had a cool gimmick. All trainers hide somewhere in the gym. It's not very hard to find them, but it's cool that you can only see them in a certain angles. This time, we need to defeat all of them before we can tackle the gym leader. The first one had a ditto. She transformed into our shining star and nearly knocked out Maddie with copycat. But our girl Chi Chi didn't hesitate and defeated her ditto. Her next Pokemon was a water Pokemon, which was of course no match for Chi Chi. The next trainers weren't much of a fight and we reached the gym leader without a problem. Now, it's time for the final fight of the episode. Let's see what Gym Leader Gardenia had to offer for us. This surely will be a legendary fight. Her first Pokemon was Shellgon, and luckily no Salamence. I confused it with Sweet Kiss, and defeated it easily with Disarming Voice. I only like you as a friend. Friend zoned. Her next Pokemon was Houndor, which was against no match for Sweet Kiss and Disarming Voice. Sorry, I don't feel the same. Friend zoned. Emotional damage hits hard. He even hits himself out of confusion and was shortly after defeated. Her last Pokemon must be a banger, otherwise this would be a boring gym leader. She sends out Cleffa. Long story short, I destroyed it and with Cleffa goes also the gym leader down. Gardenia took the loss like a champion and even said that we are very good. What a cute girl. Sorry that the last fight was kinda disappointing, but what can I do? But more important, we get the next batch. So far we have a very good playthrough with only a few problems. Will we also get the next patch that easily? Who knows? That's the story for the next part. Like and subscribe. Bye.